You know, one of my favorite things about that technology booth, besides the fact it looks real nice, none of you saw the frantic waving that I just received to get over here to start service. It was good. <laughs> well, thank you for being here this morning. Love having you. Uh, before we get into the, the worship portion of our service, I'd like to draw your attention to a few announcements. Uh, your bulletin, you should have been handed one upon coming in. This is our source of information throughout the week. Uh, I'm going to point out just a couple quick things before we move into the actual worship service. Tomorrow, the office will be closed for President's Day. Uh, so if you need us, you have access to us for emergencies, but we will not be in the actual office tomorrow. Coming up on the 25th, there will be what's being called a crafter noon. That's pretty fancy, isn't it? Or, or catchy? This is going to be a time on uh, Friday when some people get together for a couple hours and sew these little uh, bags, like pouches, it's probably a more accurate term, to use for our Christmas child boxes. Um, the information is there in the bottom half of that uh, bulletin. Uh, if you don't have a sewing machine, you're still invited to come and participate if you have one. I think they're asking you to bring it. Uh, but it should be a good time of fellowship and to get things rolling for this Operation Christmas Child. Um, well, last week I told you that my wife would come up here and talk about Operation Christmas Child plan. And I received a stern... <laughs> so, because I'm so loving, I'll quickly explain this. So normally what we do is each family or... or adopts a couple boxes or a box, and they go and they fill it and bring it back to the church. And that's fantastic. It is. Uh, but that can be a bit of a burden on some people. Um, so we're trying something a little different this year. This year, we're going to do a focused donating monthly. So each month, there'll be a different focus that you can bring in, drop in the box, and then come the end of the year, we'll have a packing party where we get together, have fellowship and fun, and we pack these boxes for these children. Uh, this kind of allows us a, a bit more opportunity to be together, to achieve a mission together. Uh, so that'll be a little different. The information is provided there more clearly in the bulletin. And if you need any additional information, uh, you can see Bree Blodgett. All right, Saturday, the 26th, church work day. Um, nine o'clock, I almost said eight o'clock. Then I would have had to hear about it. Nine o'clock, Saturday morning, feel free to come out here, help do some things, get some work done, tidy up. Uh, it's usually a good opportunity to fellowship and be successful in caring for our church. Uh, and honestly, it's, it's pretty fun most times. Then if you're a visitor here today, looking around, I don't know if I see anyone who's brand new. But if you're a visitor today, as a reminder, we're here for you guys. If you have questions about what it means to walk with Jesus, church membership, interested in baptism, these are all things that we are happy to sit down and talk with you about. So feel free to either give us a call, stop in the office, find us after service, and we'll be glad to chat with you about that. A, a special, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's a once in, once in a lifetime announcement. Uh, we've been praying for and giving for the Smith family, Kate and Luke, uh, and most of you know little Gabe. Well, they have welcomed their new little baby boy, Sam, uh, into the world on Monday. Valentine's Day baby. Baby is healthy, happy. All the dimensions I don't know if that's what you call them. That's what I call them. All the dimensions are in the bulletin. What do you call them, Scott? Thank you. So the dimensions of the baby are in there. Little Sam was, uh, was it six pounds, seven ounces, and 19 and a half inches long. Baby's doing well. That mom is still in need of prayer. There's lots going on there, so I still encourage you, please, to be praying for Caitlin. Um, and just praise God for little Sam. All right. Praise God for the opportunity to be here today. Let's pray together. 
Lord God, we do, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to be present in this place as a body of believers. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for entrusting us with your message. We pray this morning, Lord God, that you'd be glorified through the service, that you'd speak to us, that our, our praise would be a pleasing offering to you. Thank you, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. This is 
my soul, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. If you bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, we we come this morning giving giving our everything to you. We give our time and our attention to you. And right now, we focus on um, giving our financial gifts to you as we aim to bless others um, so that they may see you in a, in a different light, in a new light, in a, in a fresh, pure light. Um, may everything that we give to you this week and this day um, be serving and glorify you in every way. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow each morning I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Fire before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Fire before us,
the darkness. I will follow you, oh, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. All right, well, the point in the service where we invite our children, if they'd like to head back to our FBC Kids Church, we have a kids church up through fifth grade where they go back and get their Bible lesson, uh, snacks and games, and they learn about Jesus in a way that really connects with them. I'd like to invite you to head back. We got our adult leaders back there ready to receive them. Praise team, I wanna thank you this morning. Do a fantastic job as usual. That, that last song, My Lighthouse, it's just such a beautiful image for me. If you really think back to what a lighthouse does, you know, more so in the past with, without all the radar and technology, it guided you through the scary times. And that's exactly what God does through his word. It's just a beautiful reminder. Well, we've been talking about Jesus uh, in different ways. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's, I can't remember who said it. It's, it's not a profound statement, but it's true. Someone had said the statement that we have created a church that loves Jesus, yet doesn't know Jesus. And that got me thinking. And this was a couple weeks ago when I started this series. It got me thinking, what does that mean? And I had the example given to me, uh, how many of you had your first love in middle school, elementary school, something like that, where you loved them so much, they were gonna be with you forever, and your parents, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, no. No, we call it puppy love. It's like you love this person, the emotions there that you classify as love, but you know nothing about them. <clears throat> you know nothing about who that person is. So you don't really love them. There's just emotions that are pleasant. And what the church has been doing, according to this, this pastor, is we've been focusing on all the good things that Jesus does, which if someone only does all these good things, it's really easy to have those feelings of love, right? Right? But you can't really love somebody until you know somebody. Does that make sense? Right, there's a reason there's a courtship period or a dating period, whatever you wanna call it, where you get to know the person before you marry the person. And that's the reason behind this series. It's to remind us of who Jesus is. It may sound, I don't know, silly or harsh. I don't know what we're going to assign to it. But Jesus is more than the guy who spared you from hell. Okay? So that's why we're walking through these different seemingly obvious points. We need to remember and recognize who Jesus is as a, as a whole. So today we're looking at Jesus, healer of man. Well, in case you didn't know, our church has had a lot of health issues over the past few years and beyond, right? We've done a whole lot of praying for people, physical healing over the years. And we've witnessed a whole lot of answered prayers in those requests for healing. I'm gonna share a quick little blurb. So some of you know my dad, uh, I don't know if he watches this or not, to be honest with you, but so my dad is 68. He still works in a rubber manufacturing factory where he has to carry upwards of 80 pound things of rubber all day long 
mixing different types of rubber. He, he busts his butt and it's hot and it's nasty and he's 68 still doing this. And he's had a bad hip for a couple years. It finally got to the point that he couldn't even come down to see us this past Thanksgiving because he couldn't sit that long. Doctor said, you need a hip surgery. You need it replaced. And they're running through all these different challenges of trying to get this taken care of. Doctor's not seeing him. Well, I can't see him. I can't see him. Your appointments are way out here, way out here. And not out of frustration, but out of true, this is where I turn for answers. I brought it up to our prayer group on Tuesday mornings. And I said, please, if you would, can you pray that this gets resolved and my dad can get some healing, some relief? That was Tuesday. Tuesday evening, we get a call. Hey, I'm having my hip replaced on Thursday. His consult wasn't supposed to be until end of March. Someone who was scheduled for surgery did not pass their COVID test, so they had an opening, and he was the highest on the list for need. That was a God thing. Now, yeah, that's, that's a praise. That's a praise. With that, you know, I, I'm, I'm taken back to, and then we've had people in this congregation who can't get appointments. I couldn't get a dental appointment. I was having real bad mouth pain. I called the VA where I get all my care and like, yep, we'll get you in. And this was in January. I said, into March. I'm like, okay, that's horrible. <laughs> Again, it's the VA. <laughs> VA, you do a fantastic job taking care of us. There's just room for improvement. Um, and, and, and we prayed and we prayed. And I didn't get an appointment. But my mouth hasn't hurt since. Okay? But now, speaking of appointments and prayer, there was a situation where this person was trying to get an appointment. They called and called, and they keep saying, no, no appointments, no appointments. I can't get you an appointment. They prayed, and they prayed, and said, God, I need an appointment. Please get me in. And they called back, and the receptionist answered said, all right, how about 10 tomorrow? The gentleman replied, Lord, I only prayed for one appointment. I don't need 10. I was hoping for more. All right. <laughs> but the rest of that is all true. Okay, I got, I got the video chat with my dad the other day. He's walking around the house with no, no walker, no cane. Because our God is a healer. I look around and I see so many faces that I've had the blessing and opportunity to pray with before a procedure, seeing you walk around and no one would know you had a procedure because our God is a healer. It's such a beautiful thing. And before we move further into this, let's pray together. Lord God, we do, we thank you for the truth of your word, the truth that you revealed that you are a healer that you are the almighty physician. Lord God, as we study your word this morning, we pray that you'd be present in this place in a powerful way. That despite whatever challenges I bring to this message, that you would overcome them and that each heart would receive exactly what you would have for them. I thank you, Lord, that you've entrusted your word to us. Be with us today, in Jesus' name, amen. So over the last couple of weeks, we have been looking at Jesus and trying to remind us or help us get to know who he is a little bit better. We looked at Jesus as being fully human and fully divine, and we focused on the humanity. We looked at Jesus as a fisherman or the fisher of men and the example he provided for us always being present, always being before us. And today, we're looking at Jesus, the healer of man. Now, I know I don't need to make this point to this group, but in case we got people out at home watching us, I'm gonna make this quick point. When I reference man, Jesus, the healer of man, 
the fisher man, fisher of men, please understand that I am talking about the big humanity. Okay? Jesus is the healer of women. Jesus is the fisher of women. Healer of man, fisher of man, just sounds so much easier to say, okay? All right, now that we've got that established. Daryl? All right. (laughs) So this morning we'll be getting our text from Luke 8, 42 through 48. And before I read this, technology booth, can we get it up there? Or is that not working right now? Okay. (laughs) All right, well, I will have the words on the screen in front of you, and I've got them in front of me. If you have your Bible, you'll have them in front of you twice. I encourage you to read along with us. Again, Luke 8, 42 through 48. And it's the second half of verse 42. And now, let's receive the word of our Lord. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. Then The woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Y'all are probably really tired of me saying this, but it's gonna keep happening. There's so much in this small little passage of scripture. There just, it, it just always is. So we've only got a couple things that we pulled out for this morning. And we're gonna jump right into our key points. So key point one, healing is given regardless of life situation. Now, this is something that is not new to us Uh, in our country. Everybody in this country believes that they're supposed to get what everyone else gets, right? We believe that. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it happens that way. But that's what we believe. That whether you're poor or rich, you should be able to get health care. Whether you're poor or rich, you should have access to food. So on and so forth. Well, at this time, we're reading this, that's not the case. And we have to remember that at this time, there were Christian leaders, Jewish leaders even, that made it a point to take care of the poor and widows because they weren't provided the opportunity of the rich. The rich had all these other means to take care of it. They had nothing, so the church came in and took care of them. And right here where this story comes out to us, do we know well, we do know. Do we remember what's going on when Jesus was pressed in on, by the crowds? Anybody off the top of your head you know? Steve, gold star, my man. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. Right? He was going to heal someone else who's sick. So Jairus is, for all, in, all, all I don't know if this is the right term, all intensive purposes, if that's not right, it still sounds good, so we'll run with it. So Jarius is considered to be a higher class citizen. He's considered to be wealthy. He's a leader in the temple. And his daughter is 12 years old and she's ill, very ill. So Jesus is on his way to heal her. Now, we see an example here a twofold example, that Jesus is on his way to do something and God provided an opportunity to do something else. It didn't change his course, 
but it gave him another chance to do something for God's glory. He was going to take care of the wealthy synagogue leader and his daughter. And the world was not surprised. Like, well, yeah, I mean, if Jesus is gonna heal somebody, obviously, temple leader, little girl, that's like stuff uh, publicity is made of, right? That's beautiful. Put that on the news and people would be eating it up. But Jesus stopped. There was a poor woman. We see in other gospel accounts that this woman is poor because she spent all her money on doctors trying to get healed from this bleeding disorder. This is important because the bleeding is obviously a physical issue, right? We know now, and even back then they had an idea, you lose blood, you lose strength, you lose a lot of things. So physically it's bad, culturally it's bad. So it makes her ceremoniously unclean because she can't participate in any of the religious stuff that the Jews did because she's bleeding. And during that time you're unclean. So she has been able to participate in any of the religious stuff for 12 years. So this woman is poor. This woman is ceremoniously unclean. And while it's implied, it's probably a safe bet to say she felt alone. Yet Jesus stopped. Not only did Jesus stop, but he engaged the woman. As we read that account, we could have probably assumed or, or been okay with the story if it had read something like this. As Jesus walked, a woman touched his cloak and she was healed. And Jesus continued on his way to Jairus where he did his miracle. And we probably wouldn't have given it a second thought. Like, wow, she was healed by touching his cloak. But what scripture tells us is that Jesus didn't just go on his way. Jesus stopped knowing full well what happened to engage this poor, hurting woman. He made it a choice to say, you are as important to me as this wealthy temple leader and his sick daughter. And engaging her, he healed her and he called her daughter. That's powerful. That's powerful. Jesus does not put stipulations on who's worthy of his hand. Doesn't matter where you're from, where you've gone, what you've done. Jesus can bring healing. Number two, faith is foundational to healing. We read in verses 45 through 48 uh, that basically that Jesus knew what was going on, that the people were present, uh, that they're pressing on him, that Jesus was in this crowd and this woman was healed. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters for several reasons. The big one that we're gonna talk about right now is the faith. Scripture made it very clear to the point that even uh, Peter used it as an excuse or as a reason. Who touched me? Well, master, hey, there's a lot of people pushing on you. It was just somebody. So there's people pushing all around him. How many of you in this room have a physical ailment or an emotional ailment that you want healing from? A couple of you. I bet you there's more than that. So imagine this crowd of people. They're going after Jesus, pressing against him. 
And yet we're told about this woman being healed. So what set her apart from any of these other people? Why do we not hear about these other people being healed? Maybe they were perfect and flawless and had nothing wrong. Maybe they lacked faith. What I can't answer is why we don't hear accounts of other people, but what I can answer is why we hear the account of her. Because her faith made her well. In a crowd of people pressing in on Jesus, she was healed. Why would you be pressing in on somebody if not to touch them? Right? It's probably a, a safe thought. You know, nowadays they may be pressing in on them to get a selfie, to get an autograph. Back then it wasn't like that. You know, back then you want a selfie, it's like the Flintstones. You take a slate rock and... I don't think you're going to walk up to Jesus, press against him, and try to slap your faces together on a slate rock to get a selfie. They were going to touch him. They wanted to touch Jesus, the Savior. And this woman did not even touch Jesus, touched his cloak. And immediately she was healed. One of the points of this that kind of, it bothers me, but it's truth, so we need to talk about it. How many times do we say, pray for me, pray for me, or to receive someone else saying, pray for me, pray for me? A lot, right? A lot. How many times we receive those requests or we send out those requests do we expect an answer? That woman did not touch Jesus going, I'm gonna touch him, it's not gonna work. No. She touched him fully expecting that when she did, she would be healed. Faith. How many of you, and I'll, I'll say this to start, I've done this, okay? How many of you have brought a prayer request to a mature, a more mature Christian because you think their faith is stronger than yours and so God will act on their prayers more fully than he will yours. We understand the power of faith and even in our faith, we doubt our faith. And that's okay because you know what? Scripture gives us a beautiful example. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You heard that passage before? It's not new to you, it's not you to me. It's been here forever. This woman fully believed, Lord, this is, I believe if I can just touch him, I will be healed. Church, we need that kind of faith. We need that kind of faith. And not just for physical healing. All right, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. We're focused right now on physical healing because scripture gives us this example of physical healing. But it is the faith that brought her healing. Jesus tells her that. He didn't say, hey, your perseverance and your toughness and pushing through the crowd to get me got you healed. He didn't say, hey, because you're nimble like a ninja and you got over here, you got healed. He said, it was your faith in me that brought you full healing. And we see in different accounts where people with just their words say, Lord, I'm not worthy of you coming to my home. Give the command and I know it'll happen. True faith, and it happens. Scripture's full of accounts 
of Jesus saying, faith, your faith has made you well. Your faith has brought you healing. Your faith has set you free. All these things are based in the truth of Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we must believe that and believe in the power of Christ. If we walk around without that faith, if we walk around not pursuing that faith, because I do believe it's a muscle, it gets bigger the more you use it, okay? If we don't walk around pursuing the desire and the effort to be a more faith-based person in Christ, we are like the crowds pressing in on Jesus. From the outside, it looks like we're part of his group, we're surrounding him as he's walking through town and we're pressing tight. Yeah, look at us with Jesus. But we have no power. We must walk in faith. And even if that, if we walk in that faith, even standing alone, the power of Christ is upon us. Now, I mentioned physical healing being the focus so far, but I want to remind you of something that, again, many times we miss. So, yes, Jesus healed this woman, physically healed her. She stopped bleeding, which, again, as a result, she will get healthier. What else did he do? By healing her, she is now able to become ceremoniously clean again. She's now able to go back to the temple and be declared clean, be able to worship again amongst other believers. So he brought her cultural healing. Even more important, now we get to look back and see Jesus brought her spiritual healing. She was able to say, the son of God healed me by the simple touch of his cloak. When I pray for people for surgeries and procedures, one thing I try to never forget is I try to include in that prayer, Lord God, somehow use this for your glory. When we go into a situation with faith the size of a mustard seed and we can move mountains, we can receive healing from the cloak of Jesus, that brings him glory. Faith is one of those things that I wish there was a pill for. Because the only way you get faith is by having to be faithful and walk in faith and trust. And that's scary and it can hurt. But he is faithful. I touched on this just briefly a minute ago. We're going to wrap with this one here, this third point. Jesus offers complete healing. I've taken some flack in the past from some other people uh, for advocating going to the doctor. <laughs> I believe, and I stand here and I say this, I believe God can still miraculously heal anybody. He can speak it and it happens. I also believe that he gave us modern medicine to help heal us and I believe that fully, right? Technologies of God, he gave us that. He gave us these things. And when we walk in a way of isolating what God can do to certain boxes, that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to say, God, you will operate in my box or you will not operate at all. And none of us should be saying that. We pray, Lord God, heal them. 
Well, when we say that prayer, that better be what we believe. Lord God, you're gonna heal them. Whether that means miraculously, they're gonna wake up the next day and be fully healed, or they're gonna go to the doctor and the doctor's gonna go, oh, it's simple as this procedure and you're gonna be good to go. The hand of God is present regardless. And many times that's where we stop. I believe God's given us counselors. I believe God has given us uh, the people to help with emotional, mental hurts and injuries just as much as he's given us medicine for our physical bodies. He's given us Christian counselors. He's given us pastors to help walk alongside us. He has all these things to help address our spiritual healing. But the core of it all is Jesus Christ. Core of it all. Scripture tells us that nothing that was made was made apart from him. So everything that came through came through Jesus Christ. The healing offered by Christ is complete. When we pray for healing for ourselves or others, I want to encourage you to be intentional on the words you choose, the direction you give, Lord God. I pray that you would heal this person and be present in this aspect of the situation and that you would give them encouragement and peace and comfort, that you would fully bring healing to whomever we're praying for. I was in a car accident years ago, many years ago. It was bad. I wrapped my car around a telephone pole so tightly they couldn't get the pole out. They had to get a crane and lift the pole straight up. And it was snapped in half right next to my head. I was jacked up. I was, I was injured good. And during that time, I'm stuck in this car. The firefighters came and did their thing and they kept thinking it was gonna explode. So they kept clearing away saying, hey, clear. And so basically, you know, saying, hey, if he dies, he dies. At least we're clear. Well, physically, I got healed from that relatively quick. I was paralyzed for a couple months with a broken back. Time went on. I got good physically. Yet every single time I'd get in my car to drive after it snowed, because it was slush that slid me off the road. Every single time I started to drive during the during snow weather, I would start to get anxiety. I would start to doubt everything. I would be covering that brake. I would be fisting that steering wheel. And I was a mess. I needed emotional and mental healing. I got the physical healing because we compartmentalize things in our life. We can go to the doctor to have the surgeries to get us put back together. And, and now medicine is trying to incorporate more togetherness. But Jesus Christ is that focus. When I lift up my prayer, Lord God, bring healing, that needs to include every aspect of who we are, every aspect of who the person is we're praying for, that we can, through faith, receive the healing offered through Christ. Because if we're not willing to receive it, how can we help others receive it? How can you sit with somebody in their hospital bed and say, I'm praying for you, it'll be okay. But inside you're going, oh, the doctors are gonna heal their leg, but I don't know how they're gonna recover from this mentally. Do not limit the healing power of Christ. I know it's simple. But we have to remember that because I've prayed with many of you and you pray like I have. Here's the focus. We pray for the focus and we move on. We don't follow up with expectation to see how this prayer has been answered. We don't consider the periphery of this impact. We pray for the one thing on our prayer list. Move on to the next one. And I'm so thankful Lord God, thank you that you've helped me see this. I'm so thankful that I've been able to see beyond that 
and see that when I'm praying for somebody, not only am I praying for that task, but I'm praying for every other task that they're facing right now. Jesus Christ is the healer of man. Not just healer of the body, healer of man. And for emphasis, women. That is our savior. We talked a whole lot about spiritual or our physical healing and injuries and things like that, illnesses. But as I mentioned, and I hope you get, the spiritual, the emotional is as vital as the physical. That healing needs to occur. When you talk to somebody about Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ offer salvation, what you are saying is he will bring you healing from the injury of sin and shame that separates you. You are gonna be healed from that damage that has been done because of sin. Because our church, our our primarily is primarily made up of believers of many years. I bring forward some of these examples to help you realize I don't want hands. I'm gonna say that. Don't raise your hand for this. But think about how many of you have been hurt by the church? How many of you have been hurt within a church? How many of you have felt like you never belonged in the church. But physically, you're fine. But when you wake up Sunday morning, you think to yourself, boy, I hope this person ain't there because they, man, I'm just so hurt still. These are legitimate wounds, folks. Don't let anyone tell you that an emotional wound or a spiritual wound is not real. I would say they're far more damaged than any physical wound you could ever have. Lift them up to Jesus Christ. Receive the healing that he will offer. Utilize whatever means he chooses to use to help you heal. But understand this, that if you are healed, it is by the hand of God that you are healed. Now, if you've not yet accepted Christ as your savior, you may be wondering what what this has to do with anything. Well, Jesus Christ is the healer. If you're living separate from God, separate from Christ, you are being damaged daily by the sin choices that we make, the sin that is present in our lives, separating us from God. And we need a healer that we may be restored. And that's Jesus. It's as simple as, and I say simple, it's not easy to walk with God, but it's simple to come to relationship with Christ. If he is knocking on your door, you open the door and say, Lord God, here I am. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for living separate from you. I need you as my savior. I wanna be healed by your power that I may walk with you. And he will. Salvation is the ultimate healing. You're born new, fresh. New creation. If you've walked with Christ for many years and you're still holding on to some of that hurt, some of that bitterness, lay it at his feet. You've already seen what he can do. You know what he's done for your friends, your family, for those throughout scripture. Just lift it up and say, God, please, Heal me. Jesus Christ is the healer of men. We're gonna pray as we close out service. We have a lot of things to pray for. 
And I'm not going to pick something specific today that we pray together. I'm just going to ask that we pray together intentionally right now for healing. We all know somebody that needs some form of healing. We've got loved ones who recently passed. We have surgeries that are about to occur, surgeries that just occurred. We have the full spectrum in this sanctuary alone. And I want us to pray together right now that God's healing hand would be so obvious that the world has to take notice. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth you give us through the examples of those in scripture. We thank you for healing this woman of her bleeding all those years ago, Lord God. And I thank you for healing all those who sit here today that have had your hand present upon them. I thank you for the healing you've brought me from sin, the healing you brought me from physical injuries, mental, emotional. I thank you for demonstrating time and time again that you are a faithful healer. Lord God, as we all pray together right now for somebody, for some healing of some sort, I'm praying for each one in here that as they pray for somebody else, that your hand would be powerfully present in their own life, bringing them healing from whatever hurt that they may be facing, Lord. I pray that your hand would be so powerfully present that the doctors involved would go, man, this is a miracle. That the counselors involved would say, wow, I've never seen anything like this. That we would look in the mirror and recognize our own healing at your hand and that we would give you glory. You, God, are good and we thank you for that. Thank you for being our faithful healer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
What is a sun if you don't give light? How do the stars shine? What are these days if you don't give life? How will these bones rise? You are faithful, God. You are faithful. shelter from the night. All I have needed, your hands provide. How will these bones rise? You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. So we We trust and we know that your word is our strength and joy. So we wait and we hope, cause we trust and we know that your word is our strength and joy. You He is faithful, amen, amen, he is faithful. Faithful to answer our prayers, maybe not in the way we think they should be answered, but he is faithful. Lord God, I pray as we go out, back to our lives, back out into the world, that you would continually demonstrate your faithfulness in a way that our eyes will see it. Help us see how faithful you are in healing the hurts of this world. And help us walk in faith and pursue that, Lord. I pray that you would refresh each heart today that we go out, that we would overflow with the joy of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I pray for each person at home that is joining us, that you would refresh their spirits, that you would lay your arms around them with peace and encouragement. Because, Lord God, you are faithful. You are the healer. We pray all of this in the powerful name of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.